Hi everybody and welcome to Matrix Live episode 19, season 3, I think. I think that's right. We just checked, so we better not have forgotten it in the last <laughs> no. like, 30 seconds. Um, well, I'm here with Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello, Matthew. <laughs> and we, as you're probably going to guess, we're going to talk about the amazing Riot Web Roadmap. In fact, we should probably be talking about the Riot Mobile Roadmap too. That, yes, that's an oversight, but... Uh, uh, let's just talk about the Riot Web one right now. It's the <laughs> yes, one we've got in front of us. That's the closest we have, so uh, we'll, we'll use those. Awesome. I hope that you can understand us too, because we're using amazing Bluetooth um, microphone technology. Um, yes, yes, we are. Yes. yes. So uh, on the plus side, um, we might actually be understandable. On the minus side, it's like 16 kilohertz over Bluetooth, so God knows whether it's actually going to work or not. And the chances of someone else's laptop hijacking this to play their random music collection at any given point are quite high. Anyway, um, so yeah, but, uh, Tom, what have we done here? Uh, well, what we've done, uh, actually, it's the result of a, uh, a couple of workshop exercises we did, uh, was it the week before last? Uh, something like that. Something like that, uh, in which we, as a team, went through uh, kind of all the things we're thinking about doing for, for Riot Web. Uh, and did a, it's very similar to what the back end team did a little while ago. And we sort of ranked them all as to how easy or hard they are to do and how valuable or less valuable they are to do. Um, as a result of that, we kind of aggregated all of the, the outcomes and took all the high value medium well a range of difficulties but all the stuff that was really worth doing and really worth considering and kind of took it and 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 made it into this so uh um uh, it's a, a a sort of prioritized order in which we're going to do things rather than a, a necessarily a fixed timeline of those things it's it's really the uh, order in which we're going to be digesting these bits of work to do. We should um, publish the um, spreadsheet that we actually did it, this one. It is linked on the... Um, uh, uh, on the project the, boardy the, thing. Yeah, on the project board. So, cool. Yeah. So we've got this already as a project board, presumably. Yeah. And we've got yeah, the um, original material. Because with the back end folks, we were lucky and we got everybody in this amazing goldfish bowl and we could go wild with post-its over a wall. Whereas in Riot Land, everyone's all over the globe. And so we ended up doing it through the magic of Google spreadsheets, for yeah. better or worse. It's actually not a bad way of doing it. No, we're really surprisingly well, um, except we completely screwed up by not recording the whole thing. Because it's amazing when you've got everybody hacking on Riot, going and filling in little squares of the spreadsheet, and it looked just like the game of life. But for... I think the data's probably there if someone wants to mine it through the uh, Google version history. So... I'm sure somebody has written a poll um, module to go and replay Google um, spreadsheet history yeah. if we could be bothered. But we can't. Um, so uh, this was, I guess, yeah, the, the um, end result of going through it. So it's not everything that was on the list. And in fact, there are a lot of things which mm -hmm. are pretty sexy, like threading, for instance, which is off the list um, for now. Um, but these are the ones which I guess bubbled to the top. It's also not everything that we're going to do. This is really oh, yeah. the kind of visible commitments we're making. In the back background, we're going to continue tackling high priority bugs. We're going to be continuing to work on platform stability and that sort of stuff. Uh, but these are the big visual changes that people should be able to, to see coming out of the team. Precisely. So what are we doing? Should we, do, should we quickly go through it, post it by post it, and see, hopefully say useful, interesting things? Are you yes. dying, by the way? I am dying, yes. Oh, I'm but sorry. Give me a slightly upgraded voice, I think, for this. <laughs> well, precisely. It's a bit more gravelly. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's got gravitas. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm also going to die. So no, no, I'm having a cold for the next three weeks. It's clearly going to be his fault. Well, we're in fairly close proximity. Yeah, precisely. Try not to spit on you too much. The now column. The now column. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is a, a, a range of things which came out of the exercise and some of the things that were bits we were concluding from the um, uh, 1.0 release as well. Um, so uh, we've got here reliable storage, um, and this is marked UICs minus minus. So that's um, reducing the number of unable to decrypt errors that people encounter. This is an interesting source of errors that we, um, uh, we found, which is that when your computer is nearly out of hard drive space, uh, well, your browser has a pretty big, big problem with that, and Riot in particular, because the uh, local storage, which, may, which maintains some of your end-to-end um, -end encryption keys, um, actually, it's the index DB, not the local storage, uh, can be just obliterated. Um, and Riot historically has not, not managed that situation very well. It's not communicated that to the user. So that's what all this is about. Um, and so especially with the incremental key backup stuff, it doesn't matter if your browser commits suicide because you can yep. log straight back in, grab the history off the server and continue on, which we didn't have before. Um, so yeah, the problem is it was doing it silently and it's a horrible, horrible failure mode, but not yep. anymore, almost. Yep. almost. 
Um, the next one is eradicating scroll jumping. Can I talk about this one? Go on, go on then. Okay, so scroll jumping, uh, I don't know if people have noticed it in Riot Web, when you're going back through content, particularly in end-to-end -end rooms, particularly with replies, particularly with images that are getting jumped into the scroll, uh, into the timeline, it can bounce around like anything like multiple pages suddenly zip past or zip in the wrong direction and it, at one point we had it working perfectly about two years ago and it's gone a bit rotted and bit rotted and bit rotted and so having got one point out the door we want to properly properly fix it at last and bruno has been on an amazing mission um to go and completely rewrite all of that and i won't bore everybody with the details but suffice it to say that it is merged or is it about to merge to develop it's about to merge to develop and it should be unrecognizable. It's a completely new implementation and it's designed to be as unfragile as possible. So, in fact, we were testing it with um, mock-ups where all of the um, timeline entries animate in size constantly, as well as appearing and disappearing whilst being paginated and depaginated and there were no scroll jumps. So it should be able to handle any content we chuck at it now, hopefully. Yeah. Um, what we've got next, we've got room upgrade support. Um, how much detail we need to go into on that. It's basically making sure that the right end user experience is still good when you've gone via a room upgrade. Um, file upload redesign. Um, again, the file upload uh, component is one that was radically redesigned as part of the redesign effort, but that didn't get into the 1.0 release schedule. So that's something that uh, Dave is working on right now. Um, again, may be done by the time this goes out. Um, and breadcrumbs. Anyone who is um, uh, has experimented with the, uh, the labs feature of breadcrumbs uh, We've had universally positive feedback on it. Everyone who's using it here loves it. Um, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's basically tra uh, tracking the rooms you've most recently accessed in the order you've accessed them. So classic breadcrumbs. Uh, and it's just an easy way to maintain multiple conversations and sort of just get back to that context you had just a few seconds ago or a few minutes ago um, in, the, in the room list. So there's a few issues there to be worked through, but um, um, I think Travis is actually working through those right now cool. as we speak. And that is literally what everyone's up to right now. Yeah. So what comes next, Tom? Well, that's when we go on to the next column, um, SAS verification. This is a feature which has landed, um, but there are some issues with the implementation, some UX side, mostly on the UX side. Um, so this is uh, essentially tracking all of those and wrapping all, those all up before we declare that that, that uh, feature complete. So this is the interactive emoji verification style stuff. Yes. And I guess the most annoying thing about this, I find at least, is that if somebody tries to verify you and go, how, how does this work? Basically, it's possible to log in on a new account and you suddenly get all of your SAS verification requests come back to you. Right. Which, uh, yeah. and, and also people can do it in the middle of the night and then cancel it on you and yet you still end up with the <coughs> request and the cancel and all this sort of mess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's basically polishing around that. I'm surprised no one's complained about it. Yeah, I think it works. Actually, it works when you're using it as it's meant to be used. When the two people are in the same location and they yeah. click the button and you're waiting for the, the request to appear, it works properly. It's the problem when someone is... someone files a request when you're not at your computer and then, yeah, it sort of kicks around. Yeah. Cross-signing? Just, just a little one that cross-signing. Yeah. It is marked. It's marked big, apparently. There's a uh, fair amount of work to, to do there. Um, Almost done, though, or at least mm, Hubert's making yeah. good progress on it, but yeah. um, uh, there's still enough left that it's still considered as next. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's some... Yeah, Hubert's been working on the, the Synapse side and, and into the JSSDK side. Uh, there's more UX around, around that to do. Reactions? <laughs> So this, it might be good news for people that as soon as the next column, we have both reactions and message editing on the horizon. So we've committed to actually getting this done over the next like six weeks or so to try to finally give us our upvotes and our downvotes and basically arbitrary aggregations of messages. Most of this will be happening on the back end side of things, but at the end of it, we actually need to go and put the lipstick on it. Yeah. And... Um, I don't know what more there is to say about it, really. Um, the semantics for edits are uh, going to be that all of you can always see the history change of um, the well, the history of the edits which have been made to a message unless they're redacted. Um, and the point here is that when you paginate through your messages, the server is going to be giving you the related events, whether they are reactions or whether they are the edits. In the case of reactions and edits, it should actually give you the um, 
uh, aggregated result because we don't care about all 20 different reactions unless you actually expand them out. All you want to know is that it's got 10 thumbs up or whatever, yeah. or you want to know what the most recent editing thing is. You only want to be pulling in the historical ones on demand. So basically, that's all the good stuff to be done, but we're going to do it. Exciting. Yeah. Um, then we've got finished registration and login, which is really some more lipstick on, on that. Um, it's got nice tool tips I did that never went low. That's what the tool is. tips are really important. Tool tips. Um, uh, and finishing the outstanding redesign work. So uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's actually another project board, which is, is visible to everyone, um, which lists all of the remaining items that we're committed to doing as part of the redesign. Obviously, you've seen the app and you've seen how the vast majority of that stuff has landed, but um, uh, in a few uh, dusty corners, there are bits which haven't had the, uh, the lipstick applied yet. Thinking of member info member and info is... file panel and yeah. notif panel and basically a lot of, yeah, the the dustier bits. Yeah. Cool. What's later? Um, we've got a, got a bunch of good stuff in later. Do, do, uh, actually, do we need to have a disclaimer about the timings on all of this? Uh, I, I sort of caveated it at the beginning, but we can we can. Can we re caveat quickly, just in case anybody's getting excited, thinking that this is this week, next week, week after, and the week after that doesn't work like that. No. Um, and also uh, for the whole thing, this is our statement of intent right now. Um, Everything further to the left is more likely to uh, to, to really be a, uh, a commitment that comes out. Things over here in the later still column are all things we're planning to do later still right now. But we're a very agile, reactive, responsive team that that changes our priorities in response to the most important thing to do next. So uh, high confidence going down to slightly lower confidence as we work our way through the board. We should have a probability distribution kind yes. of going, a um, beautiful sigmoid curve, which probably goes negative around there. <laughs> Hopefully not negative, but yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to shuffle this way and I'm slightly edging out of shock. Shall we, no, shall we move the camera like that? Yes. That's amazing. Excellent. So into later, we've got community based on boarding. Um, uh, yes, we've got communities is here as well. Um, so that's a slightly uh, unintuitive order in this list. Community first it. is <gasps> amazing agility of post-it notes. Um, yeah, so communities is a, uh, a kind of a rework of everything that we've done done so far. The exercise we've taken so far has been a really useful learning exercise, hasn't it, Matthew? <laughs> oh, hasn't it, just? And so uh, if people are trying to use communities um, uh, in anger, they'll they'll notice that there are rough edges to that implementation. And this is fixing all of those rough edges. This community based on boarding is kind of the next stage, the next evolution of that. And it's a, it's a huge, it's a really, I think it's a really huge thing. So communities are going to be a much better way to structure your or individual worlds, universes, experiences of, of, of matrix for around a topic, theme, organization, whatever. Community based on boarding is really um, answering that question that, that some users will have when they first um, rock up to Riot and use it. They sign up to get an account, sign in, and they're presented with a reasonably blank canvas, which doesn't tell them what to do next. This 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 will. The people will be joining not the Riot abstract or Riot app in the abstract. They'll be joining communities in the concrete, and and this will really help to kind of bring life to um, uh, to a lot of new users' yeah. uh, experiences. Basically, yeah. stop people getting lost when they install Riot, because the common case will be that you'll be joining a community out of the box. Yeah. And if not, you'll start in a community of your own devising, yeah. like Tom Sandpit or Matthew Sandbox. Yeah. OK, then we've got fixing VoIP in one-to-one -one calls. Um, a lot of this is actually the, the, the VoIP works well. The one-on-one -on -one calling, when the call is set up, mm -hmm. works well. It's the bit around the edges. That, yeah, the that signaling is certainly needing a bit of love, to say the least. And yeah, we've just been putting it off for years, yeah. and lots of people use it, and it's a bit of a shame. Then we've got the simple stable composer, um, which I think my curse in life is composers. So when Averell, our GSOC student in 2016, <laughs> I think, said, "Oh, I know, I'll go and do a rich text editor as my GSOC project," I said, "Ah, that's an amazing idea, Averell. Let's go and do that." and thus open Pandora's box. And here we are, three years later, 
with like two completely separate implementations of the rich text editor we've had the one based on draft that Avril did which was great and then Facebook suddenly shot draft in the head and so they weren't going to support it anymore and then we switched everything over to slate and then that was an epic to get working but it felt a lot better but then it turns out that slate does not do international keyboards it does not support kanji or katakana or any of the other exciting um, scripts out there and it's uh, also got another set of weird and wonderful bugs and we find ourselves wondering whether we should open Pandora's box a third time and this time just do a really simple, not rich text, just let you enter text reliably and does pills and that's about it. Um, so don't know whether this will happen or not, but I think it's something we should be considering because it's annoying to have isolated the entirety of East Asia due to our rich text editor choice. Yeah. And most importantly, the people who replaced the composer with them. I was really, gonna, really I was gonna mention that, yeah. That whole um, that whole section of the community will be better served by this this composer. Um where did we get to? Dejargoning the app. Um so this is actually something that NADS championed a lot. Um and certainly when you're using the app a lot, you you, you do sort of become blind to it a little bit. Completely. NAD NAD hasn't become blind to it and um it, it annoys him that when you start a new chat room, there's a lot of little grey bits of text in there saying what's going on, the power levels are changing, which encryption algorithm you're using, all this sort of stuff. Now, some people will still want to see that and they'll find it useful. Uh, a lot of people, you know, that's it's just noise and slight, slightly scary noise. Um, so this is an exercise to, with NAD supervision, go through and um, kind of hack away some of those bits or at least give the option to hack, hack them away or hide them away. Um, voice messages. Most um, requested feature ever on mobile, um, and if we're doing it on mobile, which we are, then we need to be able to also support them on the client um, yep. web client too. Yep. Means I can send piano recordings to people again. I used to do that a lot pre-Matrix, and I really miss it. Um, right, we're now into later still. Can we still see that? We can. We can. Um, this one, uh, the top one, is a uh, is close to my heart. This is remodeling notifications so that humans can understand them. Um, I, I've worked with uh, the the app for well, I, I don't actually know how long, quite a while now, um, and I still it takes me a, a lot of mental energy to reason through the exact interplay of our notifications. Um, so this is to to again with NAD's close involvement to think it through and come up with something that is more obvious what it's what it's doing basically. Uh, single immutable DMs are next and this one's close to my heart because it's all my fault that all the way through the early days of Matrix I insisted um, somewhat dogmatically that, that we should always support multiple DMs to people and I think we st should still support multiple DMs to people but it doesn't mean that one of those should not be tagged as the one true DM and it's the one that appears in your people section and all the others just happen to be random rooms with two people in it and um, the, it turns out this is kind of hard because selecting the one true DM room if you're um, talking to one another simultaneously is a bit of a pain um, because we can't predict it um, up front or if we can predict it then it opens it up to different forms of attack. And I think this is going to end up probably being somewhat blocked behind MSC 1228 which is the spec change for decentralized identifiers everywhere such that it, uh, long story short, we wanted to, turn, I tried to spec it over Christmas and it all fell apart and I realized it's actually a lot harder than it should be but we want to do it. Cool. Um, then we've got E2E search and E2E notifications. Uh, some work has happened on E2E notifications already, um, but these are both, um, uh, yeah, they're both slightly more complicated than you might expect, and they're both blockers to E2E being put on by default across the board. We now have three different options, by the way, on E2E search, uh, which is getting hilariously out of control. Um, there's the one that Tech Guy did last year, which is a daemon written in Node that uses the, um, uh, what's it called? Bleve library in Go, which is an elastic search clone to index the rooms. But the problem is that you have to run that as a bot somewhere, which is a little bit clunky, and we just want something that works. Then there's the possibility of getting the clients to go and index everything by basically spidering right where, but literally go and spider all your rooms and put it into some kind of ad hoc full text search thing. I'm sure there's a JavaScript one somewhere, and we can use that. 
or there's the idea of a kind of hybrid between the two, which is what Polyar is looking at now as of last week, which is both ha basically having a reusable component, possibly written in Rust, which we compile down to WASM, that uses Tantiv, which is the Rust and full text search thing that is meant to be like um, Lucene, but better. And that can then be the same component that all of the Riot clients use to the extent they can even share the indexes so that if your Riot web client goes and indexes it using Tantiv, it can then upload the encrypted index onto your matrix server using the MSC 1945 that Hubert, I think, just spec last night, which provides you with freeform encrypted storage on the server such that another client, whether it's a Riot Web or a Riot iOS or Android or whatever, or indeed any other matrix client who wants to tie themselves to Tentiv search indexes, um, can go and download it and use it and decrypt it and um, uh, share the gossip, the indexes with one another. It's going to be fun to see how it works, but Polyar has been looking at Tentiv and um, who knows which of the three we'll actually end up with. That was a nice, concise explanation, right? Yeah, yeah, of, uh, of, of that. Uh, well, well, well scoped and easy to think about problem. Um, then we've got two more. We've got improve API docs and contribution guidelines. So this is um, essentially helping to um, engage the community better right at the beginning of their involvement in submitting sort of a code to the project. Um, so it's much clearer how you can best structure something that will um, most easily be accepted by by the team and become part of the code base. Um, so that's that. And then implementing the black theme and making the dark theme lighter. So we got quite a <laughs> quite a lot of feedback um, about our uh, dark theme that it's uh, a little harder on the eyes than than some people would like. Um, so this is uh, addressing that by essentially splitting it out into two different themes that provide two different levels of darkness. Yep. And that's it. And Easy. Yeah, yeah. Takes us through to 2026, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although, as you say, there are no timings attached to any of this. Um, what didn't go into it, Tom? Have you got your list of things which we um, I have. skipped? I didn't prepare it, though. So it's oh, it's fine. Awkward. We could just read it out. I can see a beach ball of doom on Tom's MacBook mm -hmm. Air. It's coming. Here we go. It's using tree view tabs in Firefox on a six-year-old laptop, which is ambitious, I think. The, the UX is very good. It is if, a lovely UX, but performance, not so much. Right, so we've got um, a, a list of potential future projects. If you do go and look at the, the workshop, this isn't everything that was uh, identified in the workshop, but it is kind of all the stuff that was that sweet spot of, uh, of, of, of worth looking at. Um, so we've got uh, Do Not Disturb, um, uh, which is uh, a UX feature to, to allow you to focus and stop notifications coming through. Um, user profiles, so lots more information about individual users um, maintained within the system. Extensible profiles too on the spec side of things. Yep. Finishing settings, so a lot of great work happened on settings, but there's a little bit more work there to finish polishing that. Uh, group video calls and fixing, in a very similar way to the, the, the VoIP one-on-one -on -one stuff. Uh, kind of addressing similar issues around group calls. Although a lot of that's um, happening mm, uh, slightly out of order. Uh, we've just done a bit of hacking on Jitsi. In fact, people might notice that Jitsi's got better. In fact, top <coughs> secret, Hen, if you do video calling on Matrix these days using Jitsi, if you use Chrome, it should be almost yeah. unrecognizably better. If you if somebody then connects via Firefox, unfortunately, it all falls apart horribly, especially if they're on a bad link. And it, it really kills is, it for everyone. It's just the bad link Firefox combo. A yep. good link Firefox can handle it. Bad, bad link Firefox does ruin it for absolutely everyone. Yep. Um, so yeah, there you go. Pro tip. Yeah. Uh, we've got um, uh, flagging or starring messages for future reference, which I, I would I would really love it. Yeah. I would love it so much. Um, uh, pinning messages. We have an implementation of pinning messages. Just, just need some love. Off. Uh, polishing invites. Um, anyone who invites people to a room or accepts invites at the moment will know it's that. It's a bit clunky. There's some clunkiness there that can be um, uh, filed down. Um, and then threading and multi-account. I mean, obviously, we would love both threading and multi-account. I think on web, multi-account's a little less important because yeah. you can just fire up multiple tabs. That's, that's what I do. Um, but um, threading would be lovely, but let's make damn sure we get the reactions and the edits out first. Yeah. And that actually puts a lot of the kind of infrastructure for threads in place 
and we'll see how much threading infrastructure we can sneak in uh, whilst we do it. Although Eric might kill me if I try to feature creep it to full threading. But at least it's heading in the right direction. Yeah. And that's it. That is it. Yeah. <sighs> well, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks, Tom, for being grilled whilst you're dying. And that's quite right. um, bye bye. Farewell if you never see me again because it's killed me off. Um, you're fairly robust. I think you'll, you'll survive. You calling me fat? <laughs> Robust, big phone, <laughs> like a foot. Anyway, um, thanks everybody. Um, speak to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye.